Pythagorean theorem level two. Find the length of the third side, if necessary, write in simplest radical form. So the reason I'm giving you another example of this, even though I'm pretty sure that the majority of the class is gonna do really well, is in this case, the two sides that we've been given make the right angle, so we're gonna be solving for the hypotenuse. But the second reason I'm gonna give you another example is I chose these numbers because it's gonna be a little bit tricky. And sometimes, to be honest with you, people have been having difficulty breaking down or simplifying a radical. So here we go. I have my right angle. This side has a length of six, and this has a length of nine. This is the side that I don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is my A side and this is my B side. But again, you could switch A and B. The only one you can't switch is C. Please remember that the side that is across from the hypotenuse, this is the one that has to be C all the time. Okay, so now that we have this one labeled, and again, you can use this color coding chart we've used the last few days. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. You could even color code it, but I think I forgot on the last one, so I'm not gonna color code. So in goes six for A, in goes nine for B, and we need to solve for our C squared. So that's gonna give us 36 and 81. Then we'll take 36 and we'll take a moment to add those together. And again, feel free to use a calculator. And I have 117 is equal to C squared. The inverse to a square, or that little two, is to square root both sides. And I do it in red for emphasis. So this is going to simplify to C here. Again, the square and the square root are inverse. They cancel each other. Now all we have to do is go through the process of simplifying the square root of 117. So step number one, let's rewrite 117. Let's break this one down. This is not even, even though I like dividing by two that I can't. So the next one I'm gonna try is three. And so here's a, here's a quick reminder for the rule of three. If you have a big number like this, if you take all the digits and go one plus one plus seven, let's see, one plus one is two, two plus seven is nine. If the new number you get, in this case is nine, divides by three, so does the original number. So I'm gonna come over here and put three. Let's see, three goes into, not into one, into that, that's gonna give me three, nine, two left over. This is gonna be three and 30, 39? Yeah, it's 3 and 39. I mean, if you had to pull out a calculator, that's fine. Obviously, you know 1 plus 1 plus 7 is 9. 3 goes into 9. 3 also goes into 117. And then just do 117 divided by 3. But anyways, so 3 is prime. I circle it. 39 is not prime. Uh, I'd like to break it down by two, but it can't, so I'll break it down by three. And if I want to test that one again, notice the digits. What's three plus nine? Well, three plus nine is 12. Three goes into 12, so three will also go into 39. And again, that's going to be three. And it's actually going to be 13. 13 is prime, so the factors that I have for this one is three times three times 13. Switching over to green now, I'm going to go ahead and step number two over here. Again, I'm just numbering it. You don't have to number it. But the numbers underneath the radical or square root would be 3 times 3 times 13. I'm going to pull out this pair of 3's right here. And it looks like my final answer when I'm done is just going to be 3 root 13. And so that ends up being our 3 root 13 is our final answer and we'll box that. Again, divide by numbers that you feel comfortable with, but numbers I always divide by are two and three, and then if you know five and 10, you should be good to go. But again, the rule for threes, just a reminder, add the digits. If the new number you get is divisible by three, so is the original. All right, then we tested it for 39. Three plus nine is 12. Three goes into 12, so three also goes into 39. So hopefully you found that helpful.